that's not okay. So, so this handshake problem, because these numbers here, they're not constant differences, they're increasing differences, right? They don't go up by one and then one and then one and then one. Like the linear ones, they go up progressively. And so when you have a first difference, so the first time you do that, that it's not constant, It could, it could mean that your pattern could be a, any number of things, but what you know is it's not linear. Like, if we look back at what we did the other day, whoops, look at all those little spaces on there, dotted lines and things. Here, this first difference, here's a first difference of one. And, and this one had a first difference of four. And this one had a first difference of negative two, right? And so if the first difference is the same, we call it a constant first difference, it represented the slope, okay? And that's because it was a line. Lines have slopes. So when you don't have a constant first difference, you no longer have a slope of a line because you don't have a line, you don't have a linear function anymore. That's what's going on here. So probably before I go on, I should make sure the homework went okay for you guys. How'd you do on that? It's pretty good, except for the last one. So, in, the same what, so in general, you could get most of the rules. Then what I would like to do is table any other homework questions so you could have a work day, and I could walk around and help you part of a work day with little homework questions, but do this bigger problem. So you're going to, so, so those are some homework things. So we're gonna we're gonna solve these, okay? So did anybody come up with a rule? Ethan, what do you have? And it doesn't matter like if he can come up with a rule, and you can't. By the time you leave today, you're all gonna be able to come up with a rule. Yeah, did it actually give you the answer? Yeah, it gives us, it gives us the answer right here. Oh, it gives it to you. So tell me what you can do by yourself. I'm just curious. Could you have done part? No. How about you? Well, it kind of shows like numbers, but you have to figure out what Okay. So so you mean? So tell me what the book gives you. I can't. Every edition's different. I don't remember. It just shows like the numbers already put in, but like like you have to add like some stuff. Right. Like the rule that I came up with was n times. And minus one. And, and, and the book it just shows parentheses, like a parentheses three times parentheses two. And you you think this works all the time? Or over two. Over two. Over two. Mm -hmm. oh, right. And the book leads you to it is what you're telling me, and it kind of then gives you the answer if you do all the reading. And that's not always true in your book, by the way, right? Yeah. It'll lead you to things, and then it doesn't give you the answer. So the goal today is this is right. We're gonna see. I want you to believe that it works, but I'm going to try to show you how to get these. And, and, I, and I am going to show you. You're going to feel good about this. But just in case you don't even believe that, remember you just test it, right? 3 times 3 minus 1, which would be 2. And then that has to be divided in 2. So 6 divided by 2 gives me 3. And then 4 times 3 divided by 2 is 12 divided by 2, and you get 6. So it works. So I shouldn't have this where I have it. Ah, I forgot to lock that down. Um, I, I should have that under N. So let's just lock this a little bit. Okay, and this right here, that's the rule when the top of your table has an N, right? But for 30, we would have to do 30 times 29 divided by 2, right? Does that make sense? Yes. Whatever yeah. that is. So 30 divided by 2 is 15 mm -hmm. times 29. What did you get? 435. I do believe that's right. Oh, wow. 
You could do, when you have 15 times 29, right? You could do 10 times 29, which is 290, mm -hmm. plus 5 times 29, which is 145. And when you add them together, you get 435, right? 29 be divided by 2 also? Yeah. No. So just remember um, your properties of order of operation. It's 30 times 29, and, and that whole thing is divided by 2. So it's that one number divided by 2. So if you had something oh. like, you know what I'm saying? So if you had like 4 times 6 divided by 2, that would be 24 divided by 2, which is 12, right? Well, why does that go to 15 then? Okay, so if you get that this is 24 divided by 2, right? Yeah. So just a quick, which is 12. So a quick review would be, I could just take half of one of these terms, because remember, you could write this as 4. It's not distributed part. Like, you wouldn't divide each part, because then you would have 2 times 3. But it's 2 times 6. Mm -hmm. So when you're multiplying, it's, it's like saying 30 times 29 divided by 2. And you're thinking distributive property with addition no. where you have to go to both, but it's not. I don't know if that helped. So we can practice that a little bit more. You're just remembering a little bit of your easy, like eighth grade skills. You're a little rusty on them, but you'll be good at them okay. by the end of today. Okay, yeah, quick. Well, see how there's a pattern that you would have to divide by two. Exactly, and that's what I don't like about the book starting with this problem. They start with this problem because it's something you can physically visualize, right? But I'm going to skip that problem for a minute, and I'm going to start with other ones. And then I can explain the divided by two much better. Does that make sense? Okay, so now you guys have to start thinking because we are going to be doing some harder problems, and I'm going to separate these. You could just watch if you want. Um, let me just sort of move them around here so there's room to work. Uh, and then write them down or not write them down because I'm going to record it. But it requires that you understand the linear patterns to do this. So I think we could do that. So here are some other patterns that are also not linear. Now, at the end of the day, what's going to happen is you're going to get so good at these that when you see a linear one, you're going to mess it up. To, at least somebody will because you're going to try to make it really hard, and it's not. So you have to... <laughs> You have to remember, always check the first difference. So even though I told you it's not linear, I'm not always going to tell you that. So I'm going to always check the first difference. Okay, and so when I look at this, I'm going up by 3. And then I'm going up by 4. No, I'm not. I'm going up by 7. You're my bad. Go ahead. by 7, then you're going up by what? By 9. 11. <laughs> by 11. 11. So then I would go up <laughs> next by... Crazy. Yeah, because you have four on. Yes. Oh. I'm going to go up by 15. Oh. So this number would be 30. But how do you write that? How do you write that? I'm, I'm not there yet. 33. Four. You've got to give me a chance. Okay. You've got to give me a chance. Okay. But you can all agree with me that the first difference is not constant, right? So when that happens, if it's not constant, It's not linear. We're only focusing right now on linear and quadratics. So after that, you have to take the second difference. OK? So the second difference is right here. It's going up by 4, right? See that? So the second difference is constant. Whenever that happens, 
you have a quadratic. So that's where you say the first difference is that, and the second difference is what the first difference is changing. Yes. Yeah, so you look at the first difference and you take uh, another difference. Is there a third difference? So right now, there could be, but we're not. In, in, in Algebra 2, you do more. In geometry, really, the focus is determining the difference between a linear and a quadratic and coming up with the rules, because both of those have a lot of geometric pictures that go with them that are kind of well-known or famous. Does that make sense? Yes. So you need to go through this process. And I know what happens is after, I, after you start finding a lot of nonlinear, sometimes people forget the process and they assume it's nonlinear and they make it so hard when it was just a linear problem. Well, I'm getting there. I know you guys are not very patient. Okay, so watch. So what happens next is I then just I I take a lot of space up on these, especially when I'm teaching them. I cross out a lot of numbers because you're going to have a whole bunch of numbers here, and it gets confusing. If you guys want to move, you might because I'm kind of in front of you. So we're done. The the whole purpose of that has been done. We're done. So we're never going to use those numbers again. So I just cross them out because it starts to be so many numbers on a page that I can't even focus on what I'm doing, OK? So then the next thing is I have to understand that a quadratic from last year could be written in factor form all the time. Remember? Yeah. yeah. And really, if you think about it, what would be an example, which is not the answer to this, but maybe you would have like n plus 2 and n minus 1, right? That would be a quadratic. And if you think about it, it's just two linear functions that are multiplied together, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're looking for two linear functions that are multiplied together, not these two, I don't think. No, it was over. Okay. So that means there's got to be some kind of multiplying pattern in the numbers under the value row. For example, um, when you look at these numbers here, if you can think of them as products, okay, so this gets a little crazy. So this all my notes are kind of in the way, so I'm going to just erase them, or maybe I'll shrink them up. I can shrink them up because I have that smart board. So we'll just shrink them up until we need them again. Because <laughs> you're not going to always write notes to yourself. And then basically you, you kind of want to have space to work, but this sort of organization is really important because you want to make sure in the end of the problem you know what end value up here is associated with your work down here. So I'm going to look for multiplying patterns. And when I see zeros and negatives, I just try to go through my table and find a multiplying pattern. Like the only way I could get 7 is 1 times 7 or 7 times 1. Do you agree? So I totally ignored the negative 3 and 0, but I can come back to that in a minute. Different ways to get 18 would be 1 and 18, right? Or 2 and 9, or 3 and 6, 1 and 18. Those are all your choices. And 33, you could get, are we finding common patterns? We're looking at just the different ways to find these numbers. So give me a little more time. The first thing you probably think of when you see 33 is what? 11 times 3, right? So look at, at all of all of these different things, if you if you look a little closer, um, the pattern that I see is one, two, three, seven, nine, eleven. Do you see that? So, like I wrote a lot of stuff there, so that's, now you might know why I cross those other numbers up, because you're going to have a lot of numbers to look at, right? But isn't that a clear pattern, 1, 2, 3? Yes. And then 7, 9, 11? Yes. And I want one of the rules here, and 
one of the rules in the other set of parentheses. And in fact, maybe I'll put the green circle rule here and the blue square rule there. So, so I didn't really end up using this or that. Okay. You got to stick with me. It gets better. By the third time, it gets better. <laughs> okay. Such a long process. But it won't be. It's a long process because it's new. It becomes super quick. Like, of course, I could do this so much quicker, but then you wouldn't be very happy with me. Yeah, and then I'd be like... <laughs> okay, so watch. I'm just going to go back to last night's homework. What's the constant difference from 1 to 2 and 2 to 3? Plus, plus, plus 1. Plus. So guess what? 1n goes right here. <gasps> okay, and from here to here and here to here, it's... Two plus two, so there's a two oh, end here. Oh. Okay, so far? You don't have to have it perfectly, but do you see where I'm getting the numbers? Yes. yes. Okay, so now you have to go all the way to the top because you still do the same thing. Remember the columns are super important. Like it's really nice to keep order because if you're messy, you might want to rotate your binder paper so you have the binder paper lined straight up and down because if you're messy, you could test the wrong number. So you have to do this rule. I'm going to do the green rule. 1 times 3 is 3, right? So I'm using my n value. But I don't want this anymore. I want this down here. I want to get this 1. So 1 times 3 is 3. What do I have to do to get 1? Divide by 3. But I, it's an adjustment because it's linear. Add or subtract. Oh. Oh. Minus, two. Minus 2. So that didn't go over really well. Let's try another one. And 1 times 4 is 4. And I want to get this number now. So subtract 2. It worked, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And 1 times 5 is 5. And I want to get this number. Five is oh. So I just made a linear pattern for one part. Okay? You're, you're giving up. Some of you guys are looking the other way. You've got to stay focused because you have to be able to do this. Now, I have the green pattern. I'm going to go for the blue pattern. So now, I've got to do the same thing, but I have to do two times. So two times three is six. Nicely done. Who said plus one? Ben. Ben. You have to get the seven. Okay, watch. Look what he did. 2 times 4 is 8, but I want this number down here. Plus 1. Plus 1. Wow. Oh, okay. This makes sense. This start 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 2 times 5. You have to try. You have to do it, and you have to be organized. 10. 10. 10. 11, right? So, oh, oh, what did I do? 2n plus 1, n minus 2. I wrote the order differently, right? It's the same though. So, so check the final answer, right? If I put 5 in here, I have 5 minus 2 times 11, right? So 3 times 11. Back at the very original chart, 33. Oh. <laughs> and so then, <laughs> if I want to put 20 in, I have to do 18 times 41. And whatever that turns out to be. Oh my god. I can actually remember it. It's a lot. 410, because 10 times 41 is 410. Eight times. I really want to know what does this look like on a lot. How will this look like? I say about half of the time. No, it looks like. No. It doesn't start to zero. You have to do 18. Oh. 8 times 40 what? 1 more. 8 times 41. 8 times 40 is 320. 18, yeah, 18. Yes. 
It's 738. Okay, that's, I know you can do that. Are you sure? Okay, refocus, guys. Ready for another one? You gotta try. You gotta, you wanna try one, one with me, and, and you can do it on your own, but I have a third one. To, or, or do you want to just try it on your own? Try it on your own. I like that. Okay. So, first of all, give me, give me your rule, Ethan. I got it. Okay. It's one and plus one. N plus one. Times N plus three. Times N plus three. Raise your hand if you got it. Okay. I didn't get there yet. Okay. Time out, guys. Time out. If you got it, Work on this one, okay? And if you didn't get it, I'm going to help you with the other one. So work on this one. I got to. Shh. Just stop. Stop. So I can help people that need help. Work on this one if you got it. Let me help if you didn't get it. And you two need to turn around because I can already see it's going bad there. Okay. Two six twelve twenty. Because we still have to go all the way back to the handshake problem. But let's make sure we can do this. So he's correct. So why did you do one, two, three for those first numbers? Well, I'm trying to get there. Okay. So we're going to do this. If you didn't get it, you all check the first difference. Remember the little rules, right? So it's seven. Yep. Plus nine. 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 Plus eleven. eleven. Right. So it's second. Two. So it's not linear, but the second difference Plus is two. two. Two, it's so it's quadratic. quadratic. See how much quicker that went this time? Yeah. Okay. So we're done with those numbers, right? So why can I move that? Um, so we're going to get rid of them. Okay. Okay. But because it's quadratic, we need a multiplying power. Yeah. Right? So I'm going to extend these rows to be really neat because that way I won't lose track of what pattern belongs with what term value. Okay? Or just tip your binder paper sideways and work yeah, that I way. Know. I, I know. It looks very so I look at 8 and I could do 1 times 8 or 2 times 4. And I don't spend a lot of time thinking about it, you guys. I just write it out. And then I look at both of these and I say, oh, 15, maybe 3 times 5. And so now I'm thinking, well, shoot, I got a 2 and a 3. Maybe I could do a 4, time. four times 6. six. And then, and then oh, 5 times, times 7. seven. <laughs> so 2, 3, 4, 5. See how much quicker you are? And 5 times 7. Should you include the 1 times the number? Or should you just not? Once in a while, it could use, you could use the 1. It could be because it could go one. Could have gone one, three, five, seven. Okay. Are we okay on that first step? Yeah. Yeah. So we're done with these numbers now because we aren't going to be using these right now. Right? We're going to use the multiplying patterns. And we're going to in fact use the, the red one. We're gonna we're gonna pretend we didn't have the answer. So we're going to have one multiplying pattern in red, and then like the other one's going to be in yellow. Or green, since I I'm have, using green. Well, I have color confusion between red and green. Okay, so you have color, yeah, so two different colors. Only red and green but is hard for me, but... So then you can ask me to do different colors. Okay, Whatever. I, it's fine. I can okay, go. okay. So from two to three, and three to four, and four to five, I'm increasing one. So I put one in here. You get that? Does that make sense? And then from 4 to 5 and 5 to 6 and 6 to 7, I'm increasing 1, wow. so I put 1 in there. Okay? If I'm going for the red answers, I'm going to say 1 times 1 is 1, but I really need 2. Yeah, I have to add 1. I can see how you said we're going to skip, like, we're going to think. We're going to do a linear one or else and we're going to skip over. Yeah. If you skip the first step and it was linear, you just messed yourself up because you're going to work it so hard and it would have been an easy answer. Like 2 times 1 is 2, but you have to add 3. Right. So, right. If you put 1 times 2 up here, it's 2, but you need to get 3. 
Yeah. So the adding one worked, right? Yeah. And then you have to add three over the other. Okay. So now for the green rule, right? You're gonna do one time one times one is one, but you need a four. So you have to add three. Get it? Yes. Okay. So back to the handshake problem. It doesn't work. It's almost perfect, but it's not quite perfect. So the handshake problem. It actually is the same thing as points and number of segments, because you remember how I drew the picture? Okay, and so you guys already figured these out. Okay, the problem with this, if we check the first term, it's going up at 1, 2, 3, 4, so it's not linear. Second term goes up by 1, so it is quadratic. We are done with that information. What happens if it does go up by in the second tier, it doesn't go up If it doesn't, then it's not in the scope of this course right now, which means we're not going to deal with that right now. I'll be going to later in the end. Not so much, no, but in algebra 2 comes up. Okay, so here's the problem. When I try to find a multiplying pattern, I always don't, I skip the zero all the time. The only way to get 1 is 1 times 1. And, and the only way to get 3 is 1 times 3, or 3 times 1. So if I went 3 times 1, then I would have to have a 5, right? Or if I went 1 times 1 and then 1 times 3, I'd have to have 1 times 6, but then I'm stuck with the exact same thing I started with here. You see the problem? Uh -huh. so what There's no way to get the pattern yet. Yeah. So why would they create the problem? Leave us no, but I want to make sure you see why it doesn't work so well yet. Okay, you see the problem? I can't find a clear pattern. But I have to get six, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Even. Well, if it was like this, should you try something like doubling it? That's what you should try. So, guess what? You're really going to like this. All of those numbers we're not going to use now. Oh. <laughs> we're going to double them. So now I'm hoping that, like, Right, so basically, I want you to understand how important it is when you do your homework to have space below your problem. Okay, I'm going to take each one of these numbers and double it. So 0 doubled is 0, 1 doubled is 2, 3 doubled is 6, 12, 20, 30. But, but wait a minute. You know it's a quadratic, right? I just doubled it, so I have to cut my final answer in half. I have to undo the doubling. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and look, I'm not using these anymore, right? So I'm crossing them out. <laughs> this is one of those things that could be like a far side cartoon, <laughs> you know, where the teacher's just talking and all this writing goes in your faces are like, <laughs> or you're saying things every time I turn around. But anyway, I'm going to move past that. So I'm not going to deal with the zero. I'm going to just go one times two, two times three, three times four, four times five. five. And look, I could even one, go five, three, four, three, two, one, zero. The zero works. Mm -hmm. Zero can do whatever you want, right? <laughs> so guess what? Now, guess what? We aren't going to use these numbers anymore, are we? Oh. No. So we're going to get the pattern for the purple. So what will this be used for? Well, uh, <laughs> just to torture you. There are a lot of times where finding a quadratic is really helpful. Um, I think really this is just the... It's actually a good challenge for you, and it, 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 it uses, it, it's exactly used for when you have to find 300, a case with the number 300, so you don't have to draw the picture. Expand your map. But it's bigger than that, but right now that's pretty much it. So to go from here to here, it's going up by, so we just do one in, right? And then the green is going up by one. So then you got to go all the way back 
back to the top. And to get the purple rule, you have to do 1 times 2 is 2, but you need a 1. one. one. See how organization plays a role here? And then the green one probably doesn't hurt either. Oh, I should probably double check the purple one. So 1 yeah. times 3 is 3, take away 1 and you get 2, right? Yeah, so you need to find Okay, for the green one, if you didn't think that, figure that out yet, you're going to do 1 times 2 is 2, but we need a, so it's just N. Oh, not right. So it's just, and check it, 1 times 4 is 4, and you need 4, right? Yep. So it's just N times N minus 1 over 2. Oh, okay. Good job. And so if there's 30 people in the room, it's 30 times 29 divided by 2. We already figured that out when we divided the 30 into yeah. So it's 15 times 29, which was what, 435. Okay, I'm going to stop that.